Hi guys, welcome to Comics Podcast. We're back again. Happy New Year for everyone. Um, hope you had great holidays and a safe weekend of two or yes, Christmas and New Year's. Sorry, I've had like three margaritas, so just bear with me. We'll get through this. No problem. Yes. Um so as you know, we are comics podcast, so I'll let the guys introduce themselves. Hello, guys. This is Luis. I'm Andres. My name is Humpty. Pronounce with the Humpty. And this Ash. Is Esteban. Ash. You, fucking... <laughs> you can't. You can't fuck up an intro, Ash. Like it's. It's. You can't. Eh, whatever. Yeah, it's so <laughs> jokes that don't land, though. I know they don't <sighs> land. <laughs> shank, shank. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and I, by the way, I'm Carmen. I didn't say my name, but I know. That's who I am. That's <laughs> I who said I we're comic podcast twice, but <laughs> forgot to say my name. <laughs> Off to a great start. I love that. Yeah. Um, so, Batman, the animated series, Batman Beyond, is finally coming to HBO Max. How excited are you guys about that? I'm actually pretty I- stoked about it. Uh, only because most recently my oldest uh, son is all into Batman right now. So he's mm-hmm. super stoked about it. And he has one, he has a Batman costume and legit runs around with the utility belt. And it came with plastic batarangs and he just throws them at people and things. And hell yeah. So. So when I told him that there was an animated series or there was a cartoon that his dad used to watch, he got all excited. So I'm I'm stoked that it's going to be on HBO Max. Ah, so. that's adorable. That's Great. awesome. Linking linking generations together. That's the way to do it, man. For sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was it used it was on um, DC Universe, the DC Universe app, which I was among the only like the among the dozens of dozens of people that had it wasn't very successful (laughs) it crashed hard yeah but that's when i mean it's under being uh under the warner brothers umbrella that's where hbo just bought it out which is why the harley quinn show got transferred over to that which is an amazing show by the way which is on there too um yeah no it's exciting everything on hd it's all the remastered stuff so if you bought the like the complete edition of the animated series uh, show, I, I think it comes out to like 80 bucks. Ooh, and I think we lost Esteban, but it comes out to about 80 bucks uh, for the high def version. So it's all Blu ray quality shit streamed, which is great. I'm back. Welcome back. I'm back. I'm telling you, it wasn't, it was not a good day today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very yes. happy. Chug, chug, chug. Sorry. Yeah, no, too. As many times as I interrupted you ever, like, please, that's a drop in the bucket. Go ahead. No, I was just commenting on a seven drinking his, chugging his beer. So, yes, please. Back to you, Ash. Uh, I'm very excited about it, obviously, for being a Batman fan, but that's my, like, uh, another, another uh, instance where it doesn't have to be fucking like it doesn't have to be fucking campy. It could be like straight out, <laughs> I am the knight. Like it could be fucking dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and then the only thing I just never really got into was um, Dick Grayson having Tim Drake's costume. But other than that, everything else is fucking perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and then I feel like it's one of those things that I'm gonna binge and then like having the background like Seinfeld, like just so I can laugh and quote and, you know, whatever. But it's going to definitely be a security blanket for me, for sure. Did Dick Grayson really wear Tim Drake's costume throughout the entire thing? Yeah. He never wore the pantsless ones. Oh, okay. It's like Peter Pan, that one? Yeah. It's... Did not know that. I'm not even going to lie. It's funny. I never put it into words, but right now that you said that, I, I'm like, well, oh, I guess that's true. I always just assumed it's like the... <clears throat> 90s kids would be like, why is he walking around with no pants? Like, (laughs) this is a lot weirder, but I guess underwear. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Andres, what do you think? Andres, how do you feel about it? Well, uh, 
it's good to have the option to watch it. Uh, I enjoyed it as a kid. Um, if my child likes Batman and other comic uh, characters, then I will have it on for her. Um, but I probably won't have time to get to it unless. So it's pretty awesome that it's there in case I ever need to go back to revisit it. Oh, yeah. Just be very nostalgic about it. Yep. We were at uh, a Comic Con and I didn't want to spend the $160 for the Anway. <laughs> so, so, Esteban took a picture of me and like Kevin Conroy's like off in the background. That was <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the moment where it's like we we stopped and we're like, it's him, it's him, it's him. So. Well, Ke- Kevin Conroy is a fucking legend, man. Yeah. Well, he's he's our Batman or our Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Both. So for been doing it for over twenty years. The voice in the video yeah. video games, a lot of animated films. Like it's fucking ridiculous. It's great. I love it. Yeah. And it's- if you watch the series, you can hear how he was like a rookie uh, voice voiceover artist, and how uh-huh. he like exponentially got better as the years continued and just how we like really tapped into that voice. It's That's awesome. That. Cool, man. Love it. They had like uh, just different like storylines, like even sometimes from the comic, like uh, they had that, that rogue ninja from the league of assassins. I don't know if you guys remember that one. And then like, he fucking took off his mask to fight him that episode. No, nothing. Anybody? No. It rings a bell. And then there was a, a, like Harvey Dent becoming Harvey Dent or becoming two phase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the um, the creation of Harley Quinn, like it, I don't know, it's just so nostalgic for me that it's going to be like there's nothing to watch, and it'll probably be that for me. No, for, for sure. sure. I mean, I mean, we were we witnessed firsthand the creation of a brand new character on that TV show. You know, um, I thought the the one episode that really sticks out is well, not only that, but the villain too was a uh, Killer Croc. I thought Killer Croc was yeah, funny. he was fucking dope. Killer Croc was great, and I think the I think my favorite Batman the animated series episodes were the ones with Clayface in it. I was gonna just say that, so you, yeah. you got me. Oh, yeah. remember when he gets caught in it? Uh, and he fucking, uh, I don't want to see you sword battering the bat hook or grappling hook. It was the the grappling hook? Yeah, all, yeah. Comes out of his chest. Yeah, like as very, a kid, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, very alien. <laughs> like that was great. I like that part. That part was great too. So, okay. but we're all excited. Super excited. Extremely excited, and then the next scene is probably going to be Justice League on there. So, Oof. yes, mm-hmm. I'm excited because, as you guys know, I was not very in well, not that I wasn't very into Batman, but I mm-hmm. didn't read any comics, nor do I, nor did I watch the series, the animated series. So, I'm looking forward to watching them and getting into it. So, that's fucking dope for me. Uh, I know Ash and I had talked about it, and this is one of the ones that you had mentioned, the cartoons. Um, so I'm fucking looking forward to it. And I know my coworker, I think I've mentioned her before, um, she did tell me about the, um, you just talked about it, Luis, um, the DC um, app. Oh, this is universe app. We're at before, right? And so she had told me, she's like, but just wait, because everything is transferring over to HBO Max. So just watch it there. So I'm yeah. excited for all that content to transfer over. That's pretty cool. They even, uh, it was so successful, they even came out with a comic book based on the animated series. Yes, they did. Oh, sweet. <clears throat> and then there was one, was it in that universe? Correct me if I'm wrong. There was one animated movie, wasn't there? From that one, yeah. that universe. The Mask of the Phantasm. Mask of the Phantasm, yeah. yeah. That's a very Sub-Zero good movie. Sub-Zero 2, kind of. That was what? Sub-Zero. Is Sub-Zero, another? yeah. Uh, oh. uh, a little bit off, uh, uh, but it could be argued that it was the middle movie between oh, the yeah. Batman and Adventure, or Batman animated series, and then the, the new Batman Adventures, like, when yeah. they already... Because they don't really talk about Dick Grayson, they just like he's not there, and meet this. I see what you're yeah, yeah. So yeah, it could have been, it could have been that middle one. But I think that one was the only one that had an actual theatrical release, wasn't it? No, Mask of the Phantasm had a theatrical release. No, that's that's the one I mean. Is Mask of the Phantasm? Oh, that one, that one had. No, no, no. You're good. Might have been on those, deep, those uh, Disney. Yeah, fucking, yeah. yeah. Those, yeah. The straight to DVD or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think you might be right. Now that you guys brought it up, I just want to fucking see that now. 
Which one? Mask 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 <laughs> I think it's on HBO Max. Oh, I thought it was like a going date. No? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, the Mask okay. of the Phantasm. No, what? No, Mask of the Phantasm came out, was the only one from that series that came out in a theatrical release. Are we? So. Okay. What I'm saying, but my, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> but the actual animated series is out on a certain day, right? Or are we saying that it's there now? Oh, no, it's I think now. it's... Is it there now? Well, let's see. <laughs> by the time you, by the time you're listening to this is probably there now i mean it's not um, like we're yeah, not in probably. front of computers or anything i know serious uh <laughs> and then batman beyond not to be outshined uh that is an amazing show also to mm-hmm. it started off as that series and then mm-hmm. it, it morphed into uh, a comic book run and he's still running a running comic uh there was like there's an interesting documentary that ign did on Batman Beyond, like just the this past month actually, and they talk about how the filmmakers or the the showrunners rather, uh, they didn't they wanted it was very successful uh, having uh, the new Batman Adventures and Warner Brothers is like we need to do something different, and it pretty much just halted production of it to make something new, and so Batman Beyond initially was going to be called Tomorrow Night. K I K N I G H T, and then at the very end, it became Batman Beyond. But um, fuck, I can't remember his name. But one of the, I, I want to say, Tim, not oh. Tim. Is it is it Bruce, Bruce Tim? Bruce, Bruce Tim, Tim. Uh, which was one of the main showrunners of mm. the animated series. He wasn't taking it seriously. He didn't want it uh, because it was at the time the CW, or at the time it was just WB they were uh, pushing, re- they were really successful with like Dawson's Creek and mm. all these like teen shows. And so that's where the execs were coming in and be like, okay, no more Batman. Let's make Batman a teenager because mm. our, our demographic is teenagers. So right. teenagers want to, and so they changed the formula to something that didn't need to be altered with. And it's just like the classic story that we hear all the time that these execs that don't know what the fuck they're talking about come in and tell these writers, be like, Hey, do this to fit this agenda that we have. And so uh, the, the group that was working beh- uh, on new Batman adventures are like, fuck, like, what do we do? And so they're kind of mm-hmm. coming up with these ideas. And then that's where they came with, the whole idea of uh, Batman Beyond and that whole storyline. And then it just evolved. It boomed. It did really well. And then it just came to an abrupt stop also due to execs, but then comic lines kept going <laughs> and everything. So, Oh, how, how money makes the world world go round guys. But anyway, good shit. Two executives that don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't give it a chance, but then also when, now that not rumors, but you know those what ifs, the uh, Michael Keaton can now be like that Bruce Wayne from yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, I love that. Now I'm because of those rumors, I guess. Now I'm gonna give it a chance, but I never that liked show was, that show is so good. Like, yeah, I really? get that uh, you don't have uh, Bruce Wayne in the cowl anymore, yeah. but that show is so fucking good. Like, if you would give it a, a chance. I think you would fall in love. It with hooks it. you in really quick. Like even yeah. the fir- the first episode does such a strong homage to Batman. You see him mm-hmm. defeated in a way that we've never seen him. Like he is about to lose a fight. He's wearing the Batman Beyond suit. He created it because mm-hmm. his body was getting older. He's in his mid sixties, still f- crime fighting, and so he has this suit that amp- amplifies his strength by ten. So that even though his body is getting weaker, he can still fucking pick up a trash can over his head and like fucking chug it, knock people out with a punch. And so it gets yeah. to a point where he gets wrecked and he gets to the point where he's about to get killed. He he finds a gun on the floor. He picks it up and he aims the and his hands shaking. He's aiming it at one of the burglars and they run and he looks at his hand and he like throws it. And so Batman fans know that he hates guns. So the idea mm-hmm. that this man was so desperate that you see him bloodied, picking up a gun, like aiming it, and he can't really see straight because he's like 
I think he's like, uh, he had a stroke in the middle of the fight. That's what stopped it. And so all this mm-hmm. shit. And that's when he's like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And so yeah. that's the opening scene to Batman Beyond. It's like, okay. spoilers. Dude, it's so heavy. It came like, out in the 90s, man. Like, if you haven't seen it yet, <laughs> it's so, I mean, so heavy. And just seeing, like, like Bruce, like, you know, you, you see him at this point and then, you know, introduce the new the new uh, protagonist, whatever. And then, anyway, right. great watch. Check it out, guys. I will. Back to you, Carmen. Better. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I want to hold on to us mentioning Michael right. Keaton as Batman um, because Warner Bros. confirmed that we're getting two concurrent Batman series. And so I wanted to ask if you guys think he's referring to Michael Keaton or is he referring to uh, possibly Ben Affleck? Um, well, we don't. What do you guys think? He was talking about uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman being well, in one universe. And then we right. don't know we don't know what's going forward yet because uh, as so of we got last Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton both signed down to do the the come out in the Flash the next Flash, the flash point, and right? they both signed mm-hmm. out for more uh, Batman afterwards. So we mm-hmm. don't know if the next series is going to be either Michael Keaton as an older Batman, which could be Batman Beyond, uh, done in the an actual. Um, like brought into film mm-hmm. or if it's going to be Batfleck going forward. So we don't know yet. I would like the, sorry, go ahead, Luis. No, I was going to say, I would love that to, to be the case Andres, but mm-hmm. I saw an article today that they confirmed what they're referring to is that the, uh, the projected release of the Batman with Robert Pattinson is set to be in 2021 and the set release for the Snyder cut is set to be in 2021. And so the direct quote off of them was our mm-hmm. audience is intelligent enough to understand what a multiverse is. So they wouldn't get confused with two Batman showing up in the same year so that there's going to be two different franchises. Although they also in that same statement, they commented that they plan no spinoffs off of the Snyder cut. Snyder cut release. Yeah. So, but the, um, but the characters supposedly that's what they were saying. But Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck are not, com- uh, they're coming out in the flashpoint, and that's what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not spinoffs from the Snyder Cut, but spinoff possibly from the flashpoint from the new Flash. That's where Michael Keaton and uh, Ben Affleck are, are reprising their roles. That I know, that I know, but just yeah. the, the statement regarding the two simultaneous Batman showing up the mm-hmm. they're referring to like the solid yeah, stand of yeah. affleck and then this guy i mean keaton it would be so dope to see like there are reports that tom holland said that uh throughout this the the set of uh, homecoming, homecoming that mm-hmm. in the vulture suit he would say i'm batman under his voice like he'd get close to tom holland and say that like so it's clearly something that's still you know God damn, I would giggle like a little girl if I was fucking Tom. Hell Holland. yeah! So <laughs> legit. Anyway, I'm sorry, Ash. I cut you off. Uh, uh, what were you saying earlier about? Uh... It would be cool. Exactly what you said when you gave the 20 year old spoiler. That same <laughs> instance where because <laughs> they even said, um, well, I guess you know it's uh, you see it once and then people just take off on it. So if you see it once, you're gonna see it 30 times. But they kind of said alluded to Keaton wearing the cowl one more time. So that would be cool if it was that scenario. Well, obviously not for fucking Flashpoint, but for, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, if they do that for Batman Beyond, if they mm-hmm. ever do a, that type of spinoff movie, that's all I was going to say. I mean, I would love it to happen. I don't think it will. I, I think it would be so great for it to be a Flashpoint type thing where Flash shows up in a Batman Beyond world mm-hmm. and there's like a little snippet, like a little snippet in, in the show, you know, <laughs> that, that would be great. Um, or in the movie or whatever, but yeah, here's the hope. What do you, okay. With, well, we will talk about Wonder Woman, but with the Wonder Woman being successful and fucking everybody loving Aquaman, mm-hmm. can you guys deal with another JLA with a different, Batman, like different Bruce Wayne. Like if all of a sudden they go fucking 
I'm just any fucking name I could think of of uh, fucking Tom Cruise. You're now Batman. Like, you know what I mean? Like, are you guys willing to not Tom Cruise, but you, you get what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. You've done so many movies that it kind of helped build that universe. It'd be yeah. weird for them to just be like, and Andrew Garfield, here you go. Like, you know what I mean? It'd be weird. Yeah. I mean, there's so many storylines out there that I think that they, they would, they would benefit from even if they were to do a justice league, but without, without Batman, like, mm-hmm. Because there are, even though I know he's one of the founding members, he's part of the Trinity, but he, it would be great for like, let's say Batman RIP when Batman's not in the picture and Dick Grayson has to step up. Like if they were to hone in on that, you know, uh, in the, in Batman versus Superman, they established that the Jason Todd events that actually happened. So if they were to like pull, there's a lot of different Easter eggs that they left throughout the Batman films that are still canon that they can potentially pull from. So yeah, that'd be, it'd be cool to see, you know, a different take of it. But I mean, then again, if Robert Pattinson's in it for the long ride and be like, Hey, you're going to be this Batman now, then so be it. <laughs> I think we is would take it. Is the Batman plan for a trilogy or is it just go as, play as we go? Do we know? I haven't, I haven't read anything I of it. I just, go as we go, right? I, o- <laughs> I always assume they're working for a trilogy. Like, mm. I'm always expecting some sort of like cliffhanger at the end. Like they'll, they'll wrap up the story, but then like an after credit scene or something like, cause, because money, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, what I can see happening and I hope it happens is that the Snyder cut is going to be a big success, hopefully. And then that's, what's going to bring Ben Affleck back to be Batman because mm-hmm. Yeah, Warner Brothers is saying, yes, you know, two Batmans running, you know, at the same time, you got Pattinson and Affleck. I think, I think that as far as the HBO Max series, it is going to be a spinoff from the Flashpoint, like on Vesta saying, I can see a Batman Beyond happening in, in HBO Max, but I can also see somewhere down the road that Affleck gets his own TV or his own HBO Max series, you know, with... Oh, wow. I can see that happening. I would love to see that happen. Is it going to? No, because Luis is giving a sad face. So I, I I blame Luis for us not getting a Batman, a Batfleck TV show. I mean, Affleck has been super vocal about not liking the role of Batman. It's like any interview, he looks so miserable. He's just like, I'm not even hungry and I have to eat, you know, like, because he's not like putting on all that muscle and shit. But to be fair, mm-hmm. the the dude's coming like he got back in shape to do reshoots. Like, so I never thought that would fucking happen. I was like, oh, they'll just use the footage that they already have. And that's but- what I'm saying is that because he went through all that work again to do it, he probably got that. You know, Snyder probably said something to him, you know, uh, saying that you know this is this is gonna work this time because you know the BS that he had to go through with Josh Whedon and stuff. You know, I don't know, and- man. I mean, the reason why he walked away from it was he was saying that it was for him to get together and to do his own Batman movie, because remember, the, the Matt Reeve one was supposed to be his. So mm-hmm. for him to write, direct and act in it, he was saying it was extremely stressful, which added on to his addiction to alcohol, you know. So, which yeah, is the why. dude likes to party. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's that what ended up happening. So... I can, that's what I'm saying. I can see Ben Affleck coming back and having his own HBO Max series. And I can see, you know, the characters from that Justice League or from that Batman uh, world come in. So I can see like a Joe Mangalanello coming in as uh, Deathstroke. You know what I mean? I can see that happening. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think, and I think they've already said that the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is in the same, um, takes place in the same universe as the Robert Pattinson Batman. So Oh, they have said that. Yeah. The, so it's a possibility that we might see both of them there. So I'm open to it. I mean, Affleck, when he first got cast, um, I mean, after the initial hate, you know, <laughs> of everything where he was told to stay off the internet for like a good three months. Uh, but when he his first interview about it, he's just like this, my whole acting career led me Mm -hmm. here. This is what I've been wanting to do. Uh, And then the sudden shift to 
not wanting to be a part of it. Like just being sick of the, the training regimen, uh, hating the fact that he's touring for a different movie. And they're asking him, what about the Batman script, Batman script, Batman script. And mm-hmm. uh, at the time he was, he was writing a movie that ended up coming out, which not too many people heard about called uh, live by night. I didn't see it, uh, but it's like a mobster movie that he was wanting to finish that movie before, you know, he started doing the final touches on, mm-hmm. on Batman, but that he's writing that, but no one cares about that. Everybody's just Batman, 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 Batman. And he was just so, which obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're putting yourself out there saying you want to, you're an Academy Award winning writer uh, and, and director. Mm-hmm. And you're saying that you want to take the helm to do a Batman film. Of course, we're going to be interested, but that it was just like too much. And he's just like, dude, fuck this. I'm done. <laughs> and then he just like stepped away. So for him to say those things and then be like, you know what? I will come back. I don't want to put my any eggs in that basket because I don't think it'll happen. But again, just put one egg, just one, one egg, one, <laughs> just one. Hey, little... the dude dropped. He dropped weight to do these reshoots. So, which is more than what he did for fucking uh, Joss Whedon, because you can see the reshoots where he's uh, where he's not in shape, and then he's in shape. If you watch the current Justice League, the one that released, uh-huh. you can see the differences. And uh, that's the... what I'm saying. Just get like a little quail egg. Put it in the basket. Just leave it there. That's fair. Happens. Fingers are crossed, good sir. Fingers are crossed. I'm just saying. I, 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 and I will not lie. I was one of the ones that was hating on Ben Affleck as Batman. I really was. Um, that fucking meme, the "Hello Darkness, my old friend" meme, was fucking gold for what a month and a half. Yeah. Mm, yeah. About. There it is. You are. I'm just interrupting you so that people could drink. No, I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just. You know, I want to see it. I'm pretty sure a lot of other people want to see it. And plus, yeah, all the other actors, all the people, Paul Dano, like all the other people that a lot of times, like, like fucking look at Arnold Schwarzenegger movies where he's the main guy, but everybody is so much better. You know what I mean? Like, not just him, but just, yeah. you know, there's fucking villains that are fucking amazing. And you're like, well, you're willing to accept. Stallone's four lines with when you're fighting fucking Gary Oldman, you know what I mean? Like, fuck yeah, that's dope. It's it's why Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula is a success. <laughs> fucking Keanu be like, I say driver. Like, no, bro, no, don't ever do that. Just play it American if that's what you can do. But I do love Keanu. But fucking Gary Oldman's Dracula was fucking dope. All right, it's, it's funny that you brought in that. Like, oh, well, let's talk about Batman real quick, and then an hour in. Sorry, Carmen. And then Dracula. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, that was not quick at all. Got it. Uh, uh, I, well, I, I, I should have known where I was going with that. But um, I forgot to ask, and I don't think I made this or we have a drink of the night. So how about we just all say what we're drinking tonight? And that way um, I can take I another sip of my margarita. Host. When you're the host, it's me. So I am drinking Jack Daniels today. Nice. I'm having it's a seven. Modelo. Is that the Ooh, only the Negra one? Modelo. Those are good. Mm-hmm. That's the Sorry, only good. one you have? Like that? You have the one? Well, or do you have no, like one? I, yeah, I, you, I have, have, you know. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. AC is so cold. I'm just asking. It has friends. <laughs> it, it has friends. Uh, I was drinking whiskey, but now I'm drinking my girlfriend's leftover Pinot Noir. Whiskey. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I love Pinot Noir! <laughs> I, was supposed to have, I was supposed to have the wine. No, fuck that. All right, after this shot, I'm going to have the wine. No, 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 wait, no, time out. Wait, how many have you had of whiskey? Well, one, it's Stewie. So when you say whiskey, you got to say whiskey. That's what I said. I said whiskey. Uh, I've had four, but I think you want to see a combination of Jack Daniels and wine. When I if do you it. do Jack Daniels and wine, you're not you're gonna have a bad morning. I'm just telling you that right now. I work from home. Yeah, you might. I love my job. <laughs> just in case you're watching this. Andres, what are you drinking? Oh, it's, I'm just having a couple blue moons tonight since I'm recovering. Nice. You drink blue moon to, blue to moon? hydrate? 
Yeah. I'm trying to sober up, so I'm drinking Blue Moons. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not Bud Light, though. Oh, I sure. would never. I would never. <laughs> And then it's I just have, like I don't even I, have, I don't even play beer pong with Bud Light. I have self respect. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and we just lost Bud Light as a sponsor. All righty. Is it really a loss? <laughs> and then was like, did we really know. want them? <laughs> we, we really did not. And <laughs> they canceled their checks. Yeah, that's cool. That's Back cool. to you, Carmen. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting my six hundred dollars. Have some integrity. <sighs> um okay so let's see while um ash is coming back uh let's talk about Giancarlo esposito i don't know if you guys follow boss logic on instagram but he did this um artwork of Giancarlo esposito as um dr doom possibly and i thought it was pretty sick I'm down with it. I like the idea. I like him as an actor from um, Breaking Bad, from Foyos Hermanos to uh, his rendition of um, Moff Gideon and what we know as a Mandalorian. We just finished that. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm all for it. What do you guys think? Fantastic. I think it's a great fan cast. I mean, I think he's the only one that can still, with him just saying, my name is Victor Von Doom, it would, st- like him saying it would be, you know, scary or intimidating, you know, even in the role. I mean, I don't know. Did you guys see season two of The Boys? Yeah. He was yeah. in the, he was in The Boys. That's right. He was oh in The Boys. God. So, and he, he plays, no, The Boys. Oh, the blade. Okay, oh Jesus it. Christ! Um, <laughs> he heard you, buddy. Don't feed I into know, it. Just, I know. just power just, through. <laughs> just <laughs> like the mighty slow snow plow. Just keep going, Mr. Plow. Um, Once so again, uh, that's Mr. Plow. Thank you. Come on, <laughs> gotta say it twice. I know. Um, so and that and I think he played an excellent role, even though the role was a small role, you know. But he still had that, you know, commanding presence, you know. And I think he, I think he'd play a perfect dr doom you know even if you know the other half is him just doing the voice acting for you know the the dr doom character you know what i mean yeah i don't know what i like about uh that guy is the same thing i like about um which has been brought up before uh Mm -hmm. vincent d'onofrio there's a it's a sensitive confidence. I don't know. I didn't know that's not the word I want to use, but it, there's a, there's a silent confidence. I don't know. No, no, no. Just, you know how he's like Kingpin is like the shit, but mm-hmm. when it, when it deals with Veronica, it's like, you know, uh, he has a similar <laughs> thing. He has that similar. Isn't it like, Vanessa? It's not Veronica. It's, it's like, Vanessa. It's Veronica. Right, right, it's right. Vanessa. <laughs> The, the, the shivering, you know, Cheryl. No, I no way off. But. The shivering hand gestures. Is like, <laughs> he's like, you know, with with uh, Veronica. <laughs> like I've never Veronica seen Martin. Pin act like that. <laughs> oh, I watched that the either. deleted scenes. What was going on there? Fucking Blair Witch. You dropped your phone. Don't tell. Uh, <laughs> you should be thanking me for stopping your fucking train wreck of a statement you were having there i i think i think he does he just has this uh i don't know a, he's very confident but there's like a thing that could break him and i love that about a villain like i hate villains that like walk in the room and i'm gonna take over everything but like even vader had fucking a sensitive moment it was fucking awesome i get that back to you i get that back to you carmen <laughs> Did you go get your wine? Tell us about it. Okay. I am not a wine drinker, but I love wine when I do have it. Um, and I got this for Christmas from from Carmen. Thank you very much. Hitler Ranch? It's called the Ranch. But you know what? You know what? Um, no, that's that's 
me and my best friend, right? Who is who I go drinking with all the time. Okay. We were fucked up the time that they gave us that bottle. So the next time we went, we're like, we don't want to be insensitive, but we think it was called Hitler. Can you please give us a Hitler bottle? And the girl, um, Lonnie, she was like, um, I think you mean halter. <laughs> and, I, and we were like, yep, yeah, probably. That one. You're like, you're we like same, not, same. And same, same. Me same and her same. still call it Hitler. Uh, sorry, people that oh, are listening. We're not trying I'm to be insensitive. I'm but sure the people at Halton literally. Ranch love to hear that you refer to their wine as Hitler. <laughs> because you they're, know the they they're the best. They're the best. remotely know my accent. <laughs> Perfect, because I love their wine. So, yes. I'm sorry, I will not ever refer to them as a Hitler wine anymore. Maybe. <laughs> it was really good. Like, two or three of these and, like, good night. It was really good. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, just about. So this is my drink of the night. I don't know how to talk intelligently about it, other than it's wine. It's a Cabernet. It's a red. Uh, <laughs> non. It, it comes from a bottle. <laughs> Uh, Chloe, what's her name? Chloe, the girl that was in Kids. Savini. Uh, it, it, 2017, L, well aged for three years. Uh, a delay. I do know something about the year, which I will tell you because I know. Uh, uh, first of all, hi Lani. I got her to listen to it. She's a fellow nerd, and she's a sommelier that I Yay. and my best friend go bother all the time. Um, she became a fan of the podcast, so Lani. Hi, Lonnie. Hi. Hello. Um, and I told her I do apologize for always butchering the wines that she so highly recommends. But um, 2017 was a drought year. So all the wines from that year um, are specifically, um, they're rare just because of how little vineyards actually survived that drought and like how much uh, grape there was to produce wine that year so any 2017 bottle from any winemaker is a pretty good bottle to buy just because it's going to be rare at some point but that's the only thing I remember and then we drank a lot so you know at least I had one fact the rest of the education just went downhill about that exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) halter bottle turned into Hitler bottle so and a drought and that's (laughs) Um, so, um, we had talked about before the stand, which, um, for whomever is listening to us and does not know, it is a book and I would like either Luis or Andres to tell us about, um, where the show, the stand is coming from and a little bit more about it. I'm, uh, I'm gonna throw that one over to you, Andres. Um, so the mini series is out on CBS All Access. It's CBS streaming network, and it's a weekly. Uh, they're releasing it weekly, so uh, there are only two episodes out so far. Um, the first and second, and yeah, that's where we're going with. Um, you read the book on that one, right? Yeah, and I saw the first uh, mini series in the nineties. See, I never saw the miniseries in the 90s. Um, so let's omit that from your memory. How do you feel it holding up to the book? Uh, so <laughs> this is going to be kind of repetitive for me but tonight with later topics, but it's pretty disappointing so far. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. Like, yeah. it's it. I watched it. I watched the first two episodes and... I can confirm that I watched it. Like there, but there like wasn't. The, to be fair, I, I like the second one better than the first. A hundred percent. Yeah, the first one it felt like it was pulling in a couple different directions. Too, um, yeah, it was too all over the place. It, um, you, I can tell they were making the comparisons to COVID nineteen, like mm-hmm. coronavirus. Like they're like, we're relatable. Like they're they were really <laughs> trying to hit that on the nose. That is like, really like how the story is that. That's kind of one of the things I wanted to see it, and I thought it was perfectly timed to to I wouldn't say cash in, but it has plays to people's fears, and you know how people like being scared about stuff. Yeah, right. Um, but that's really what the story is about. Um, it's done even more so in the book than the original series, 
Um, um, I mean, what I what I will say that I'll, I'll say this: um, it's not lost on me that if I read a comic book and I see a movie that follows the comic book to a T, it bothers me because I'm like, I already knew it was going to happen. I already read the comic book. But right. then there's another group of people that get upset when they change the ending to make it to refresh the the feeling. They're like, that's not what happened in the comics. And then that becomes a thing too. So I will admit a part of my frustration to watching the show was reading the book. I didn't know where it was going and I couldn't pinpoint because there's multiple storylines happening simultaneously. And I couldn't pinpoint who was who in the show versus the book. Mm -hmm. So part of it was, it kept me guessing, but the argument can be made that that's what the creator, the screenwriter is trying to do. They're trying to, it's a book that's been out fucking forever. So they're trying to keep those people guessing, but yet also make it interesting to a new audience. But I don't know. I, I, I'm in it. I'll, 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 I'll probably finish it at this point, but yeah. um, it's not a, like you have to drop everything and go see it. It's definitely not that. I will. So I really love the book. So it's kind of hard <laughs> to really talk shit about this. We're and, not talking shit. They're just observations. Uh, Cause I, I was a very big fan of the book also like uh, the, the, the villain. I was happy with that. I was happy with the portrayal there, uh, just with certain little things, mm. little little details, Easter eggs, if you will. Yeah, I will say uh, like the way they King. light out that first episode uh, kind of threw everything off because they're jumping in from time to time. Mm. And the, some of the part of the second one, they kind of ruined. I wouldn't say it was a surprise, but you because uh, it was kind of leading up to it. But you could kind of tell um, a certain path a character goes down. And they kind of just uh, had that come out right up front. So I do question. Oh, I think um, I know what you're talking about. I do kind. Of, I do kind of question the layout of the episodes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end up watching all of it since I already started and I got two episodes in. I'll see how the rest of it goes. I, they, there's stuff that I could complain about how certain characters are being portrayed. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the stuff that I really like is the Lloyd character in the second one, who is um, the one that's in jail for you guys who haven't seen it. Um, I thought his character is done really well. Let's see who else. Sicknesses uh, is portrayed really well on screen. Who? The sicknesses, the oh, virus. Yes. Holy it's weird because like they have the distended throat and stuff. Right. It's um, so disturbing to watch. Like, yeah. Another character that I really liked that they changed a little bit was Larry. Larry's character has done really well. Franz is kind of weird. Oh, James Marston's character. Um, um, God damn it. I can't think of his name. I can't remember Fuck. his name. But, but yeah, anyways, he, he's doing a good job. And, Randall Flagg? Yeah, uh, Dark Man Randall Flagg's. By, uh, his little, his little uh, happy face on his on his which is uh, from sweater. the books from the book so that's pretty cool yes sir so the little little easter eggs little things that i think uh make nice little nods to it and yeah there's room for improvement we'll yeah see. overall i'm disappointed so far so yeah well um i haven't read the book uh i know of the book i haven't read the book uh it's on my to-do list <laughs> Uh, to do that um now as far as james marsden characters his name's Stu. Stu Redmond. yeah thank you Stu redmond sorry yeah. no no it's all good um i actually dug his character uh in in the show i mean i can't compare it to the book um i think the the stand is stephen king's longest book i think it's like 1300 pages something like that Ash is already. Ash is like, God damn it, thirteen hundred pages. I think uh, his last issue of the Dark Tower is bigger than that. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. See, it's like fucking Bible. Well, yeah, no, and then see, that's another that's another series that I want to jump on is is the Dark Tower because that's it's a five book series, isn't it? No, I know. Yeah, it's it's a five book series, isn't it? Six now. He wrote another book, uh, like uh, I want to say in. Like in 2012, that mm. he's putting right in the middle of his series to like expand on the universe. His Is universe, to like throw people off or what? No, it's yeah. I'd be throwing. I'd be giving stuff away if I try to explain oh, it. Okay. Uh, essentially, what he does is he he 
he sews all of his books together with the Dark Tower series. So if oh, Stephen King's okay. universe is Cujo, Pet Cemetery, The Stand, right. the Dark Tower exists in the middle of it, and it ties all of those things together. Is so, it? Okay, yeah, so we be- just the characters of all of those books come in, villains, heroes, the whole thing. Or even sometimes it's not even a character. Sometimes it's just the name of a town. And it's like, holy shit. And if you're well-versed in Stephen King lore, you'll be right. like, oh shit, this is from that. So uh, Castle Rock. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah, Castle yeah, Rock, yeah. Dairy. The, so, the Hulu uh, series that they didn't, they try to do something like that, right? On Hulu and then it got canceled, mm-hmm. right? It was like two seasons in and it got canceled. Well, they canceled Castle Rock. I did not know. That sucks. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I know it's a, good, it's a good book series. Yeah, see, that's Which has again. Wag's brother, right? Well, real life brother, the character. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, the yes, actor. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the episode. I only saw the first episode. I didn't get a chance to come around and watch the second one yet. It's it's on my to do list. Um, the first episode was really good. I liked it uh, again only because I'm going based off of the show, not the book. Um, or to be able to compare the two. Um. I, I will say it was a little um, odd, not odd, but it was a little shit. What's the word? Uh, it was scattered. A little, yes, scattered. It was scattered because I didn't like the fact that they were jumping timelines, especially at the very end. I was just like, what the f-? like, what's happening here? You know? I was going to say, uh, so my partner and I watched it and she doesn't know anything about the book and stuff. Mm-hmm. So when they jump back and forth through time, they only uh, do the banner for the time jump once. Mm-hmm. So every time it would change, I'd have to be the one telling her like, oh, this is in the past before and this is in the present now. And I was like, if nobody else had been either, you have to be paying extreme attention to know that that was the case mm-hmm. or you would have to have read the book or seen the original one to know that that there was a time jump so i did have a problem with that it's so yeah. funny you say that i was i was the referee to my girlfriend as well yeah. and she like she looks at me she's like what i'm like they're in time they're it's in the past right now and yeah, like, wait who's exactly. that no no no. that's a different family that's in the right. future probably like you know uh, yeah and see that's, that's really thing. funny you say that yeah that's the thing is that there there's a certain scene where they show this one character on there you know and then when my wife saw it, saw the, the character, she goes, that's the guy from the beginning. I go, I don't think so. I don't think, I think that's someone completely different. And then sure enough, at the end, she goes, see, I told you it was this, it was him, you know? And I'm just kind of like, and then as soon as she said that, and that's when the, like, it, everything clicked. I'm like, oh shit, they're jumping through time. Like, you know, like it was like one of those like light bulb moments, you know, I'm just like, oh shit. And Which then by the way, the book and the first minute series isn't like that. It's mostly linear. With uh, like congruent storylines going on, and yeah, and I I did see the first miniseries, but I don't remember a lot of it, you know, because it came out in what ninety four, you yeah. know, I think is when it came out. Uh, so I remember watching it, it's because I was real. I really dug, or I still do, like Stephen King's work. You know, well, I think one of my favorite books from Stephen King's work is Salem's Lot. I love that book. <laughs> that book's amazing. You know, that's one of my favorite books. Um, and that's the one. And I want to see a Salem Lot movie, you know, in the future. Really you'll get it. it. I know. So but. Salem's not Salem's Lot. Uh-huh. One of the main people in that plays a very pivotal role in the Dark Tower series. Oh, yeah. see, perfect. See, so, so you really. Yeah. If you love that book, you would love it because I want to say it might be the third. It's either the second or third book mm-hmm. that a lot of it takes place where they I'm just going to call them heroes for lack of better words, where the main group of the Dark Tower series are interacting with the heroes of Salem's Lot. And you're seeing that shit unravel. And it's so fucking good. Continue. Yeah, see, so that's that's the thing. (laughs) And see, that's that's why it's like I need to get back into my Stephen King, you know, reading. You know, because I dug that the sh- uh, the Shining was fucking amazing. That book was amazing. Pet Cemetery was just fucking bananas. You know, reading that shit as a kid. You know, um, so that's why it's like the Stand. That's one of the ones that I want to read, but I haven't never came around to doing it. Now, being that the show is the way that it's playing out now, I still want to read the book. You know, um, but I think I, like I mean, the so audio, far, it was very ominous. the The show was very ominous with the whole parallel with the you know virus and everything so i mean 
I, I liked it. I mean, I, I'm going to finish the, the nine episodes, you know, the total nine episodes, but. Um, oh, is, there, is that the cap? It's going to be in the, nine? The, yeah, it looks like the cap's nine episodes. So I'm, I'm stoked. I want to see it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested in how it, okay. So correct me if I'm wrong. The, the villain in the dark tower is the dark man. Uh, he's one of them. The man in black, Randall. Oh, the Fleck. man in black. Okay. Hmm? Same. It's supposed to be the same character in uh, it's same character in the stand, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, Bill sir. Sarsgaard. Okay. Yeah. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> And scene. So when he slices that motherfucker's neck and the mucus comes all fucking out and the fucking <laughs> like not down, bro. Fucking <laughs> not down. But it was cool because he was a fucking dick the whole fucking yeah. movie. And I kind of thought he was gonna be one of those fucking dicks that are gonna be like um like uh, I'm a dick now, but then I'm gonna be the hero in the end because this is my job and this is what we do. And he never comes around, he just gets his Fucking next sliced and oh spoiler. Thank you. And fucking the it was fucking, an inconsequential character, so you're all right. That's the, true. <laughs> the fucking mucinex guy comes out of his fucking neck. That's and disgusting. Like, oh, fucking gross. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, ah, guy. <laughs> I'm happy you're dead, but at the same time, that is a, I can't even take when you like the little kids when they walk up to you and they saw Oh, the like, mokal just or when they go like this. That was yeah, or they do what? That that show had literally zero gore, so I'm surprised. That's true. That it really didn't have any gore. Like well, there was I mean, no blood. Do like that. Up at night, I'm just telling you, fucking. If I fucking, if, if would you hold a fucking napkin to Luis's nose and say, "All right, blow into this"? Yes, if oh. I had to. Why not? I'm his friend. What are I you? I wouldn't expect any of you guys to do that. I'm surprised. <laughs> I would surprise and I respect you all. Does he, does <laughs> does he have broken arms, hands? Or what the fuck? He can't do it himself. I'm playing my switch at the time. <laughs> Come on, bro. My, hand, my hands are occupied. You need to no, play my girlfriend's That is like, no, bro. You know, no. no. But, so like, we would... it... what? Sorry. Uh, if we were to give it a uh, grade so far, I would have to give it a uh, six but i'll keep watching and hope that it gets better that second episode was much better than the first so that gave me some hope and yeah i did so. like that we didn't know we like when he uh i like the relate relationship between fucking cyclops Stu, whatever his name is and uh and the doctor because again the doctor was like by the the relationship I thought the dickhead was going to have with him is the one the doctor had with him. Like, are you down? This is what you're the only one that survived. And I can't mm-hmm. tell you anything else. And all this. That other came stuff. directly from the book and they played that. part. That's one of the better parts. They played yeah. well. They played uh, well. And then he chose to die with. Oh, that was such a good fucking scene. And then fucking. Uh, they just open the, the guy just decides when to open the door. And then you go up and it's fucking J.K. Rawlings and it's like oh, J.K. Simmons, J.K. Fucking it's Henry Simmons. Rawlings, the like, Harry Potter. Just kidding, J.K. Simmons. I'm just trying to make that joke work. I'm trying to make it land, right, Carmen? <laughs> <laughs> but it never does. I know. That's a that's the story of my life. Better than Amelia Earhart landings, huh? But, um, oh, <laughs> zoom, zoom, like zoom. That. Just just the I same, actually. The, the guy that fucking they pull out of the and car. the blast. The jokes are is the same guy at the end that fucking st- uh stag flag is the guy like holding the like how the fucking virus got out like it was so fucking good. That's why when you said it's not, I was like, oh okay, I don't. I have bad taste as it is, but I liked it. I even no. tasted. Well, like, that's where the second episode is much better than the first. Yeah. Like, yes, those are the parts that were very uh, redeeming qualities. That the scene with the, the masturbation scene, I could have done without. Yeah, I could have done without that. Like, well, I just didn't need it. I mean, as it is, the kid already looks like Jim Carrey and Tim Roth's kid. If the and I was like, ah, oh, damn, bro. <laughs> Can I give you a sandwich? No, but the I think that the, I thought the the funniest part is that he's trying to emulate Tom Cruise the entire time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that part, I think was hilarious. I'm like, oh, you pick the biggest Scientology dick to be like your fucking role model. Spot on, bro. Because okay, in that in that style, like you know, he gets his ass kicked for being a peeping tom, and like 
the way it was set up, you're kind of, as a viewer, you're made to feel bad for him, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he turns into fucking. See, that's where like uh, makes transformation. No, this is gonna be bad, right? He's gonna okay. Uh, you know what it felt like? It felt like um, <laughs> uh, Dracula, fucking um, uh, fucking what's his, his second name? Dracula what's reference. What's mm -hmm. Tom character's name? I can never who's who's Tom Waits' character in Dracula? The fucking minion. Anyway, it felt like Igor? He, he might be the minion of of Flag, like by the end, just to get his way. I know it probably he's not going to be, but I haven't read the book and I've re I saw the fucking 1994 thing and that thing was cheesy as fuck, but I still watched it. And oh, I I really liked that first one, the first, yeah, it, for the time it's cheesy. It was, like it was so fucking cheesy. Sure, I but, don't disagree. Again. You know, they said the word fuck twice, and I'm like, all right, I'm in. So That's all it took. That's all it usually takes for Ash to get, like, real into a series if they say fuck or if they show boobs. Ash is in. I'm not that chauvinistic. I'm more or fucking pervy, but, like, like no. But you are that shallow. <laughs> Ink. That was, like, a good, again, the fucking guy under the board while the guy's like, oh, yeah, fucking slamming it on my nuts. That came out fucking weird. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Ultra he... Ranch, Hitler Ranch. Got it. <laughs> Nature oh Valley. God. Nature Valley. Oh, God. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I'll just say that um, I'm halfway through the book. So when I watched mm -hmm. the first episode, I was a little, I was confused, as you guys both mentioned, that you had to explain just because. Ooh, hold on, okay. hold on, before you go forward. Um, where in the book are you? Like, what is the last thing you left off on in general? I, I'm not gonna even gonna lie, I don't remember because are I was at, to uh, it while at, I was at work. Uh huh, go ahead. Have they got into uh, at, uh, fuck, have they got into Colorado yet, or they have not even gone to Colorado yet? They haven't gone to Colorado yet. Then the fucking first episode like fucked up a bunch yeah, of stuff for you already. It for you. That's why. Okay. That's why when I watched the first episode, I was um I was lost just because I was like, okay, I understand some of the first some of the characters. I was like, the it's going out of order even than it was presented in the book. The you know like the car coming in and they're at the store like he's crashing or whatever i was like that's the opening of the book so yeah whatever so it was a little bit confusing then i figured out oh okay we're jumping through time kind of like a butterfly effect kind of thing mm -hmm. but then i'm like but i don't know where we're at over there and then now we're back over here uh so yes i was a little bit lost the second episode um i haven't watched i only watched the first one because I was like, I really have to finish the book. And so I've been going through it. I will put it on tomorrow while I'm filing. Yay, fine, yeah, I, filing. Um, um, the second episode will kind of uh, ruin a bunch of more stuff. So I would definitely finish the book. It's the better of the plan. two so far. So you'd get more bang from your book from staying with the book which, I would which is funny because the part where you're at you're probably a good 300 pages in so that just comes to show you how long that fucking book is <laughs> yeah i think the audiobook is like 33 hours 33 to 35 42. hours 42, 42 hours yeah. yeah two days bro <laughs> two days bro you're it's not even reading it you just listen Ultra entertaining as it is <laughs> fucking that sounds like fucking christopher walking as it is um uh, every fucking okay i remember that in binging uh the stand 94 like everyone mm -hmm. felt like its own little fucking movie but i'm so used to like mandalorian's 40 minutes and at most something's gonna be an hour but with commercials we're down like what 52 minutes something like that so everyone uh, like i i was hey bitch you don't have a life what does it matter Fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> and the train keeps coming. You're a loser. Watch it. God damn. <laughs> yeah, <I guess> we'll do. <laughs> Jesus. 
Okay, I feel like this is a good time to uh, move on to Wonder Woman eighty four. Do you want to? Do you um, want to hit your hit your spoiler alarm? I know I was going to be like, so we do this um, alarm situation, even though I'm pretty sure everybody's watched it. But if you haven't, you have until the f- spoilers yeah. are coming. Who knows you, now? You have. Th- 30 you uh, from the day it premiered it's only going to be on HBO Max for like 31 days for or 30, 30 days, days. Yeah. yeah so if you guys haven't watched it what? yeah they're taking it down right after so mm-hmm. they can make room for is it go to theaters or why uh probably, probably so for, that they can purchase it pretty much oh no fuck no what bro you it's, got to see it for free hell like, you saw it already where are you crying with the accents bro fucking that's Luis's thing what the fuck Sorry, are you guys. talking about? Andreas, go. Oh, go. Oh, I'm on. Go. She's all the host. I'm all. Andreas, go. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I want I want Carmen, even though she's the host, to go first. Great. Yeah, she had the most to say about it, like the most interesting stuff. I have to say that I know, and I it was the last podcast or the podcast before where I said they couldn't do anything wrong to this movie, and I would you'll love it no matter what. I think I said something along the line of that. And I would like to say I was wrong. That I was wrong. <laughs> and I take it back because fuck. I mean, uh, where do I begin? I fucking wrote down the Begin in the beginning because that was like the All right, right after I'm going to jump in. Sorry. Go ahead. From the start, the part when they were in Themyscira, that was good because you get to see the games and the life of the Amazonians. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which, sadly, that's the only but part you see Robin Wright. I then. will make a comment that Diana was a fucking brat. Yeah. She was a fucking brat in that opening scene when she makes it down and she's like, it's not fair. I was like, shut the fuck up, Diana. First of all, was- good for you. You're resourceful. You're fucking resourceful. I give you that. But you're fucking annoying right now. Like sit it the was fuck her down. learning a lesson. It was important for yeah. later in the movie. Yeah, kids have to be taught humility. Nobody's born with it. So, so it, I, I this is, is true. Part. Children Super do good. not know humility. <laughs> I know this for a fact. <laughs> I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> but I hated the movie uh, right from that fucking uh, uh, the jewelry heist scene and how stupid all that fucking shit like bullshit comedy was where it was like the first one is so I wouldn't say necessarily like super serious but this was all fucking Very campy ho- hokey bullshit I was like oh what the f-? even like the fighting which from the first one I loved when he when she's fighting the fucking jewel heist the the robbers and she's like making him do mm. flips and stuff. It's like, oh, what the fuck is this bullshit? Yeah. Did you feel that it was very? Uh, I know it's supposed to be Wonder Woman eighty four. So did it take you back in those first scenes of the robbery heist in the mall? Did it take you back to the eighties? Were you ever taken back? I I'll no. make the argument that yeah, like in like it, it, it reminded me of Stranger Things. I was like, is that the mall from Stranger Things? Like that was the first thought in my head, and then seeing their attire, um, it felt eighties esque. Uh, I will say the movie, the movie was good. It was good at best. I'm not saying it was, was it? amazing. It was good. It was, was good. It? it was good. Are you convincing yourself, or are you trying to convince me? No, I'm not trying to convince anybody. Okay, I I thought it was good. Was it better than the first one? Not even by a long shot. No, they it, it, it in, in comparison between the two, no. This seemed like a one a one shot comic book. Okay, sometimes in the comic book industry they put together a one shot comic book where it's a whole bunch of things that happen in this one episode or this one issue of a comic book and that's it. And you never hear about it again. That was this. Yeah. Okay. That's how I felt. I think they tried too hard to take us back to the eighties. 
I think that happened. Um, it was very, it was, it was a movie based off of a wish, you know, and, uh, and I think that a lot of, a lot of us, when we first saw the trailer where Steve Trevor was there, everyone was just like fucking blown away. None of us thought like, oh, she made a wish to bring him back. Like everyone, there were, okay. there were theories that were there that were saying, did she make a deal with one of the gods in order to bring him back? Yeah, we never would have guessed that she was raping an innocent man uh, that didn't have exactly. a will of his own. We don't know Did if he had a significant other. That? We didn't know if he had a significant other. We don't know where his parents were. We didn't know what he did for a job. So he got fired. He never called his mom. And his girl, his girlfriend's girlfriends were like, we just saw your man walking around with some chick. He was happy at the end. What the fuck okay. are you talking about? Yeah. There's okay, so if the roles were reversed, that, if that was role was reversed, with that pimp that ass fucking uh, get up that he had, if the role was Come reversed, on. there is no way we would be okay with that. Of like <laughs> that, you I had this girl, like, like that you're you're banging somebody that has no idea that it's happening because someone else is. I don't know. I, I think Carmen, you're on my side on that one. I think I you're the only one. Is this because no, 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 no. When it, yeah, no. When uh, it, it was first happening, when he was introduced, right? Like he's mm-hmm. at the, they're at the dinner or the party, mm-hmm, the, ga- mm-hmm. the gala or whatever, and he's like calling her, and then he says the the line that brings mm-hmm. her back, and, he, and she's like, "Wait, what did you say to me?" And and then we, we see the camera angle, right? Like turn, turn, and then like we see that it's um, him. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. But what happens to that guy? Like, where, like, where is his life? Where, what, like, he just goes missing from his regular life? And like, we're supposed to be okay with this because now he's over here with Wonder Woman. Like, I, I don't get me wrong. I like the idea that they tried to bring him back and do the fish out of water stuff again because they did that in the last movie. Mm-hmm. So it was a little bit repetitive for me, but. I was just like, but like, you don't give me an explanation of how this works for the other dude. Like, what the hell? And then you're going to bring him up back at the end of the movie. And he's just like, oh, hey, like, I don't fucking know you. Like, I was inhabited by a soul, maybe. I don't know. Like, what the fuck? But then, like, some people do have recollection of what happened, you know, like, oh, the nukes are disappearing. You know, spoiler alert, if we're like going way too forward in the movie but like and then nobody fucking remembers what the fuck happened really and here's my issue with that here's my issue with that okay so at the very end of the movie where max lord has the entire tvs focusing on everybody did not anyone's in did not anyone think that like okay this guy's girlfriend whatever wished for him to come back you know what i mean so it's just kind of like you know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's just one of those things where I'm just like, okay, I, I feel it was a missed opportunity for uh, Cheetah's character. Uh, I think it was a massive missed opportunity there because it, it was very, I want to be, I want to be someone better. And, and, and again, it, I see, uh, seeing movies in the eighties and stuff like that, or movies that take place in the eighties, that was that constant variable in the movie is that someone wanted to be someone else they didn't want to be themselves okay so that was this so that's why i'm saying this movie tried extremely hard to be a movie to try to bring you back into the 80s you know so i feel it was a missed opportunity where to i think kristen wig how she played her was i think great i liked her as an actress and to see her as a villain everyone's used to seeing her in the comedic roles and doing but to see her you know act and be the villain I thought it was great um but I feel it was a missed opportunity I I feel that if it was the movie was set around Max Lord and then at the very end you see her turn into Cheetah and then there's the third movie is her and Cheetah because I didn't like the fact that the very end she's not Cheetah anymore she's back to her old self yeah so I like the fucking movie because uh, he just wanted to be successful for his fucking son. And we see why, because he's fucking wetting the bed and getting his ass kicked every 10 seconds. 
and it does become where he's the villain and he needs this and he needs that but it, it started from a very genuine place uh i do like the I fucking mean, did it though hold on do you guys okay we shot all over it i'm gonna fucking be the fucking nice guy for once and be that i did like it i like the mall scene because i liked um <laughs> You know, it was like, uh, you know, they had the little girl and then the little girl could like, I, I know you could, we, this is, it made me cry twice. One with the little son and then two, the fucking, all I want is one thing. I've gotten all through this. I've helped everybody. And all I want is one fucking thing. And I was like, huh! so I will say, I will stick up for it because it made me cry. Um, I did. I, 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 I never imagined that a guy was raped, but I, apparently a guy was raped. And he's not doesn't remember it. Um, I'm not trying to laugh about rape, but just the last thing I thought of. Um, I liked it because um, it was one of those like uh, girl to girl inspiring things because she's saving the fucking world and threw the little girl into a fucking teddy bear. And it, I don't know, it was just like a little lighthearted girl to girl moment for them too. And it was just kind of like a fucking I don't know. <laughs> that, that my life. I'd be like, I love you, Batman. Um, so that was awesome. And then I got next, there, was rumors that, there was rumors that, um, they wanted to either cut the mall scene or the, not Athena. Where, where's the place? Amazon scene? Agira. The mascara. The mascara scene. And, uh, Patty Jenkins mm -hmm. wanted to keep mm -hmm. those and refused to lose any. Um, she did come off as a brat and she did, uh, I felt I needed that scene, but I don't know what she learned, but <laughs> I just felt like we needed We needed that. the scene because it's the theme through the movie of, like, the truth is going to come out and, like, oh. the lies are not good and, like, the truth will always triumph. Like, I get it. That part didn't land with me, but uh, we can tell. We could tell. Uh, but the movie but was like great, right? Fucking, <laughs> and we got to see Robin Wright again, which fucking, we almost, we all cried when she, uh, spoiler, when she blah, blah, blah. And then the mom and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It was fucking, I don't know. I just. Okay. I I'm also like Daredevil. So <laughs> fuck me, right? Like the Daredevil yeah. movie. So really, I'm not the. If you want to see a good movie that'll make you cry that came out on Christmas Day, go watch Soul. Because that's a very I good movie. And it'll make cry. you cry. I, it is a very. <laughs> it is I'm worth your time. I'll watch a hard market. Go watch that. No offense, Carmen. You said you love this movie because it made you cry, and that's why you were defending it. So if you want to watch a good movie, if you want to watch a good movie that will make you cry, go watch Soul. It's on Disney. I will Plus. watch Soul. You have uh, it. Who does the voice for that? Yes, watch it. Jamie, Jamie Fox. Fox. Go watch it. Yes, I will watch and that. Tina um, but yes. Uh, and. I had another point why, uh, to like what you said. Says, why not have both? Like, why does it have to be like, that's just, some people could just like what they like. I didn't like Sure, go ahead. I'm like saying you're wrong. This new stand more than I did the old one, just because it, maybe it's more up to date and it's not fucking so. Why fucking are you so angry about it? No, it's just, no, no, I'm no. not angry. Are we going to give a grade <laughs> on it or? Just, I, I did say oof a lot of times while watching it. Like oof. I would then give it's a good movie. I would give Wonder Woman eighty four a six. Okay, I would. And, and you, and you said that was a good movie. <laughs> That's good. I will go. I will give the movie. Fuck. I will give the movie a seven and a half. What but the fuck? Steve Trevor or I don't know. They. I really hope Chris Pine is not gone because Chris Pine fucking can steal a fucking movie and that's with girl gal gadot oh by the way Did nobody anybody... mentioned nobody mentioned linda carter at the end um linda everybody... carter was fucking dope at the end that was dude, my favorite part when they were the stabbing movie. when fucking the cast of 300 were stabbing at the wings i was like dude you fucking right on her eyes i was like oh yeah that's her like you didn't think that like it was fucking right mm -hmm. on linda carter's eyes ours ours <laughs> right on <her> ours <laughs> I, I fucking knew it was her Anyway, Luis. Um, when, I don't know if... God damn it. So, Gal Gadot, throughout the film, I'm like, this woman is so... I mean, she's... Beautiful isn't the right word. Visually stunning. Like, there were multiple Ooh. scenes in the movie where I'm just like, God I'm, damn, that's Wonder Woman. I am going to cut you off. The fucking scene where she's fucking pushing off a tank and then she fucking goes to save kids instead of taking out the... 
That was, was a good it fucking was good. movie. Sorry, Luis, go for it. So uh, there were a lot of scenes where I'm just like, that is a beautiful woman. That is, she's stunning and she is perfect for the role of Wonder Woman. Now, what I will say in the anime world, they call, uh, similar to what you were saying, Esteban, about one shots mm-hmm. on a comic book series, mm-hmm. in the anime, mm-hmm. they call it a filler. So it's just, it's something that exists in its own world. It doesn't contribute to a story it doesn't take away from a story the character doesn't learn anything from it so if you just there it's just there so if you take it away from a franchise it doesn't add or take away anything to the Mm -hmm. story this was that accepting that it i do i will say i enjoyed it there were scenes like the the tank scene there were some stuff that were a little campy that were a little too like whoa like too out (laughs) there and it's just like i didn't want that but just because I didn't want it or it wasn't what my expectation was, doesn't mean that it makes it bad. So I'll stick it with a seven. Um, how come? How come we fucking cream our pants when Mando fucking finds out he can get hurt, but Wonder Woman find out she can get hurt, and we're like, no, nah, that's campy. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Not, I'm not saying that, that was campy. Oh my god, you're, that's you're not the part that was campy. Man. Like no, that, yeah, I understood. I didn't. That was that to me <laughs> felt very Edgar Allan Poe. That felt like the monkey's paw. Like so, when she she got hurt. Even before they mentioned the monkey's paw, I was like, monkey's paw. Like, you have to give up some. It's a, a equal exchange. You give up some. Exactly. Go on. Well, and, that, and that's what that's what Pedro Pascal's character, Max Lord, was saying. He goes, he goes, oh, I'll fix myself. You know what I mean? You right. know, I'll, yeah. I'll take an exchange for something. I'll, I'll If I have to fix myself organ by organ, I'll do it. You know, and, and that's the thing. Yeah. It's she had to give up something in order to make that big of a wish. Oh. And for fuck's sake, this is Steve Trevor. That was a fucking world war one fighter pilot. Okay. You don't think that the jet that he got into, he wouldn't be like, what the fuck is this in here? No one, no, no nothing. No one else. Is, no, he's, 100%. Like, no. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm like, he's like, what does this button do? What does this button do? I'm like, there was yeah. one That's lever. The whole explanation part about the fly and all you need to do is learn how to catch the wind. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I did get weird. The her like, flying like, part was kind of cool. I like. I enjoyed that. The fucking invisible jet. Like I did get weird about that because I was like, uh, we can't that's really the part that you. I was like, oh, that's a shot back to the fucking cartoon series in the '60s. That, was that made that me funny. laugh. I just that she's like, laugh uh, she's when she was like, I practiced once, but on a mug, and then I lost the mug. Like I was like, holy shit, that's really funny. Like I thought that was great because i thought yeah and then you know i have a problem with you guys liked of course dude the, <laughs> that one scene you see her like trying to get into that she's like focus focus yeah. focus like that Daniel that's funny older, dude older and fixes it like that was great you know but i'm not okay and the whole catching the wind thing i get it but seriously like it was a joke i know but i'm just saying it's just like <laughs> he he's a world war one fighter pilot it's it is now a jet engine that he is flying like, and then just to kind of make, and then she makes that joke. Oh, I forgot to tell you, radar. It's just like that's all you forgot to tell him. It's fucking radar, yeah, Diana. Uh, the movie. I'm quoting the movie, not your wife. Your wife. I, I thank you. I know. <laughs> In case you didn't remember your wife's name. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was a good one. I don't know. Again, like again, fucking. Spider-Man 2, I didn't really dig because there was only fucking two scenes where he's fucking Spider-Man. And I was like, I don't know why everybody loves this movie. But Oh, Jesus. He was Before only in the- you get carried away talking about Spider-Man, I'm not done talking about this movie. No, yeah. Because no, I- you, you made a comment about the little girl and mm-hmm. it being like a woman for woman movie, right? But- no, no, just that scene. I will okay. stick to that scene. I'm, nope. I'm not going to fucking encompass the whole thing. Just that little scene. Go on. Uh, I, similar to, I will cut you off. The Similar to <laughs> Captain America to the daughter in that other uh, Captain... No, did I say Captain Marvel? Say Captain you, said Cap, you, said Captain, Captain, you said Captain America. You said Captain America. Captain America. Marvel to fucking the little girl. Right? Maybe, maybe I should fix that sentence. To the little girl. <laughs> Sorry. Now I, I just want I just want to not fucking... Not encompass. I, I I thought they were gonna do the whole cheetah story in a very different way. I thought 
I like Kristen Wiig as a character. I don't like that, again, they did the cop out with the CGI and the fight scene and the dark because, like, we always really get that a lot. And, like, it could have been better than what it was, you know? And, uh, okay, I but whatever. Let me let me go back to the whole woman, woman thing because Ooh. I'm really tired of the villain always wanting to be like the hero because they're better because they're popular because they're pretty and it's like that it really like is that the message you want to give young girls that you have to be pretty you have to be like wonder woman to be accepted like why can't kristen wade's character be cool on their own like why isn't science or being like a you know a, a geologist why isn't that on its own like why does she have to be dorky and why can't she walk in heels because she's a scientist so scientists can't fucking walk in heels really like a scientist well, is not hitting up the club when she's done with finals what? i mean she might but i mean i see not, what you're all, saying. not all of hr parties like you okay so <laughs> I, I i see what i see what you're saying but i think that's the lesson that uh that she had to learn because that's the point that Patty Jenkins was trying to get across, or at least that's how I interpreted it, is that you don't have to be the pretty one. You don't have to be, you know, Miss Popular to to be worthy. You don't have to be like someone. You can be yourself and you can do whatever, which is the lesson in this case is what Kristen Wiig right. had she, to learn. To... She loses, and while she becomes cheated, she loses her uh personality of being like a nice person or like oh. a, you know like warmth her she, she loses her warmth as a human but it's like wonder woman has warmth like what oh i see what you're saying you yeah, know what i mean like i don't know way. i feel like they kind of robbed her a little bit on that i will say that i like the fighting scene of them at the white house um i thought that was pretty badass because yeah, it's kind of the, like Wonder Woman versus same. Wonder Woman in a way because mm. she still is not Cheetah yet fully. So I really like that scene. Um, did you guys? I know that there's been comments that um, Matt uh, Pedro Pascal's character he was kind of modeled after Trump. Did you guys get that? Like, did you see that? Reference? Oh no, I didn't actually until you're mentioning it. Now I see it. I, I caught that. I caught that on pretty early because he was very when he first wished to be the stone it was very trump <laughs> you know because he kind of he kind of wanted it all you know what i mean um so i i caught that i caught that part i'm just like oh okay so you're you're kind of tapping into a little bit of uh what's going on now so okay i get it you know but he was also very he was very Veruca Salt, also where he went up to the to, yeah he 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 was very Veruca Salt when he went up to that one um um one of his employees and he asked him to make a wish he goes wait a minute did I ask you to make a wish he goes yeah you asked me to make a wish yesterday and blah blah, blah this and that and just like okay come on like you know kind of kind of so why that. does everybody get one wish and um Kristen Wiig's character gets two. I he, think it was that whole part where he said I was feeling generous. Well, and not only that, but I kind of saw it more as she made the wish with the stone and she was making the wish with him. So I kind of saw it as more of the stone was genie A and he was genie B. You know what I mean? So she got her wish with the stone and then got a wish with him. That's how I kind of saw it. I saw it that way. Makes sense. Have a so the right. guy that wishes for the coffee gets another wish too. If you wanted one, sure. if you wanted one, yeah. Can we uh, just all accept that logic. it's not all gonna be Dark Knight? Like it, it just sometimes you're gonna get a fucking daredevil. Like yeah, and we get to judge it accordingly. So what's the problem? <laughs> if it wasn't for your and fucking Esteban's epic hair, that's where your power is. Until it's gone, it's we didn't hard get to my me. grade. I, I, I wanted to love this movie. I was waiting so long. I mm -hmm. give it a six. I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was fighting for reasons to like it. I love that, and I give it a six. Even after so, rewatching it, I have to give it a five. 
You saw it twice. I have to, yes. I, I, I rewatched it because, like I said, on the first time I had mentioned earlier that mm-hmm. on the first time when I was watching it, I genuinely forgot I was watching a movie. I got up and did like other shit and then came back and then I was like oh holy shit like I was watching Wonder Woman like is that how boring this movie is to me that I literally got up didn't notice and came back and sat down like that's not good so I was like maybe it's just that I'm tired whatever so I rewatched it and then I was like no I'm genuinely bored um so yeah all five but, and I really, really, really wanted to love this movie. I still love Wonder mm-hmm. Woman. I really do. I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I, I, first of all, the one emotional scene she did have when she's walking away and she's renouncing her wish and give her that, that was fucking excellent. I love that. I, <sighs> Jeff Johns and Patty Jenkins co-wrote the script. Mm-hmm. Isn't that surprising? Like, is it, I'm like, okay, dude, like he's the one that wrote three jokers that I was jizzing all over fucking four or five episodes ago. Right. And just an amazing writer. Is it different to a screenplay or, but, or is it that Patty Jenkins wrote the whole thing and he just kind of like edited it and they just put both of their names on it. Like, like what happened? Like I had, like, I, I was already excited. And then the movie opens and it says Patty Jenkins, Jeff Johns. And I was like, this is going to be great. Like, I was just so pumped. And it just didn't deliver what I wanted. Doesn't make it a bad movie. I'm, I, I, I'm standing with you, Ash. Uh, but it's, wow. it's, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. It feels, feels weird seeing uh, Jeff Johns with writing credit and the writing not go places that I've seen. What's your name? Shitara? What's your name? What? What's the girl's Asteria? name? Asteria? No. Uh, Kristen Wiig's character name. Cheetah? Cheetah? Yes. That's why I'm asking. Um, I didn't... Uh, does she look like that in the comic? You gotta wait for the camera to get you. Pretty close. Pretty close? Uh, okay. Did it right. <laughs> well, that for went you? nowhere? No, I just thought it was gonna be... I don't know. I, at first, remember when she said, oh, I like those leopard heels, and I was kind of like, ah, ah. I thought maybe it was going to be like a her with the strengths of Diana, but maybe wear like a fucking leotard. I don't know. Like but, Craven the Hunter? Like with the lapel yeah, on or something? Craven the Hunter she's a full-on cheetah in the comics. No, bro. Yeah, like, she's a full-on cheetah. The human, yeah. human cheetah. Tail and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we talking about? By the way, didn't Jeff Johns have writing credits for Justice League? By the way, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hey, Carmen, fucking bang up <laughs> job, dude. This fucking wine is dope, isn't it? Here's yeah, he also, I mean, he also produced Green Lantern, so there's that. I think he also did yeah, also co write Green Lantern. I think I'm seeing a common denominator here. Yeah, <laughs> um, I feel. And I and I have a, I've been thinking about this, especially after Wonder Woman, the whole Marvel versus DC thing as far as movies go. Uh, I've noticed that at Marvel Studios, people the 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 team that is put together per movie, they use the comic books as references. Yeah, and they take something from here and take something from here and then they make it their own for dc i've noticed that it's a guideline and dc already expects people to know what happens in the comic book you know that's that's how i kind of feel that they expect it like they're like well they should know this this comic book's been out for fucking the last 20 30 years you know like they should know this already you know things like that so i think that they use the comic books as more of a guideline and don't skew away from the guidelines really from guidelines, that, really. you know what i mean and marvel takes references and they go from there and then they make it their own you know mm-hmm. so marvel. I think I think that's where DC's failing in some of the movies, you know. Um, if they 
maybe if Jeff Johns is the common denominator, maybe he shouldn't be, you know, writing, being a part of the, the script writing team. Um, like, bro, like you're a good comic book writer, but you gotta, it, just because words on a page in a comic book and words on a page in a script, they probably won't translate the same. So I don't know. Hard to say. Part one? What's that? Was he in the original Wonder Woman? I don't think he was. I think she wrote, I think Patty Jenkins was the sole writer in the first Wonder Woman. Uh Uh-oh. Well, maybe that needs to be the thing. Well, given the rating that we've given this movie, are we excited to see a third one? I'm excited for Redemption. Same. You know? I'm excited. Yep. I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, This doesn't put a damper on the series for me at all the first one was so good that it will overshadow this one in my eyes Mm -hmm. uh patty jenkins did not write the first screenplay it was alan heinberg and jeff johns wrote the screenplay to to the first film hey you Uh, got your job back luis good job buddy yeah i mean hit or miss he's he co-writes uh most of these scripts actually so some of them hit some of them don't as long as it's not Batman Forever going into Batman and Robin, like you know, it, it, some you know fucking hardcores h- hated it, and they might have what like during the release of this is when they fucking announced that there's going to be a third one. So hopefully it doesn't continue down this road. Even though I liked it, like clearly we want to make everybody happy because that's how I keep my Batman, and that's how I keep my fucking Gal Gadot, and that's how I keep my fucking Aquaman, like. I want the finished product. I want fucking I want the fucking Thanos dark side, obviously. But I want I want the good outcome. I want fucking to see DC to succeed. Same. Yeah, so do I. I think they have I think some of the DC characters by far overshadow some of the Marvel characters. But see when we should have a movie. But no, I think that that's the most frustrating part is because the DC characters are so well known and are so loved that like it angers people to see portrayals such as the ones we've seen so far that kind of have like, oh, they're great, but ah, they kind of missed the mark. And mm. like with Marvel, at least you're kind of getting some consistency of like a curve that's going up. And with DC is kind of like, we'll see if it fucking sticks. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it'll be good. Maybe it won't. Who the fuck knows? Let's yeah. fucking watch it. You know, and it's kind of like, ah, oh, like I wish you kind, you guys had a little bit more. Like, dude, these are badass characters that everybody fucking loves, and that they're gonna watch because they love these characters. So let's fucking give it all that we got. You know what I mean? Like, Agreed. I really wish it was that kind of mentality. Agreed. I do. When we when we discussed this earlier, I do wish money wasn't a thing because we are the money then you need to make us happy you don't need to make somebody that's not into comics happy like because we're the we're we're gonna keep that shit going and we're gonna support and if you don't make it in the movie then you're at least gonna make it on merch and you're gonna make it look at the crow the crow fucking barely made any money and it's like we me and andreas fucking can talk about it all day long but just i don't know man i just the way like and I understand what you're saying, Ash, but the way you do that by appealing to the people that are diehards and appealing to the casual viewers is you make something good. You make something good that the diehards love. They pass on the word of mouth, be like, hey, this is a good movie. Check it out. And that's how you get all people to like something. Just make good shit. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah, but Make I don't like shit. that DC is like, okay, one bad movie, scrap it, and let's do a whole new universe. Like, ah, oh, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that either. Like, I mm-hmm. wouldn't say fucking scrap Gal from being Wonder Woman just because of that. No, and way. I would have said the same thing for Henry Cavill. I was mm-hmm. uh, fucking fighting for him to still be our Superman. Like, I, I don't give like I, I would even give Ben Affleck a bat flick again. Yeah. Okay. And see, but see, the thing is, like, for, for Man of Steel, it, it was a great movie. I think it was a fucking a fantastic movie. You know, that was a great movie. It was a, it was a different portrayal of Superman, you know, and, and I thought it was great, you know. 
but again like you don't scrap it because the movie didn't do well like right. okay you learn from what you guys fucking did before and then you improve on it that's what you do you know don't get me wrong out of the entire marvel cinematic universe iron man 3 was really the shittiest movie out of all of them you know along with thor the dark world dark world you know they weren't that good you know but still no they were, yeah you know they didn't scrap anything like all exactly. of a sudden no more thor uh, yeah exactly or yeah. Right, exactly. Or, but, but see, that's what they did. Uh, well, no, it, that's going in. I mean, if you're talking about Edward Norton, that's something completely different. He yeah, had, yeah. they had their beef with Marvel and stuff like that. So that's a completely different story. Um, but yeah, God damn that. If Edward Norton scrap just that man, shut up, if just shut up and just accepted it, like what eight movies and oh. the future, fucking She Hulk, fucking you've been set, bro. No, yeah, but Edward Norton, you got to know that Edward Norton's an artist. You know what I mean? He's not the casual actor that's going to, you know, not saying that Mark Ruffalo is just a casual a casual actor, but, right. you know, it, it, Edward Norton was one of those actors that dive, dove into the role, you know, and read the books and, and saw Bruce Banner a certain way. And this is how he felt he should be portrayed. And that's what he tried to do. You know what I mean? For the drama to go through, it, it's it, it reminds me of you know like, certain certain stories that you know my cousin would tell me when he got commissioned to draw for disney you know he got commissioned to draw for disney and stuff like that yeah. but he draws a certain way disney wants you to draw this way he doesn't the way draw the fuck this way. hire me right no, but see yeah exactly so that was his thing disney wants you to draw like this he draws like this you know so he had to learn a new way to draw but he said fuck you and disney said okay bye and now the dude's freelance now yeah you know what i mean where he could have if he would have just stayed in his lane and said fucking yes sir i will draw the way you want me to draw because fucking you know i got disney signing my checks and shit you know but i mean i get it you stand by your convictions so yeah. it looks like luis is having a little bit of an earthquake over there with his monitor but remember, you know how like fucking okay <laughs> so there was dc marvel and then image even though image fell Fucking Wonder Woman change. Well, you know, once they they got Rob Liefeld, Li Liefeld, Liefeld, Jim Lee, like mm -hmm. they started looking like fucking image characters instead of making, instead of making Rob Liefeld draw the way we draw Batman, they made him kind of almost image, comic like, you know. Right, but then but Rob Liefeld like, got like, shit for drawing Captain America the way he drew Captain America. Exactly. So there's that as well, you know what I mean? It's so, a nice set. Case in point, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying, you know, but I, I agree. It's not just because you have one shitty movie doesn't mean to scrap the entire thing and start okay. over, you know, I think. So you heard that here. Don't scrap fucking Gal Gadot, but. No, it's not going to happen. But it's all forget it's not gonna, that it happened. <laughs> right. It's not going to happen that they're going to scrap her. She's They've already greenlit it. They're fast tracking it there. But it, what I'm saying is, if fans loved The Amazing Spider-Man and it didn't do well in the second one, why are you going to fucking scrap it? You just learn from it and then move on. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. Just finish the trilogy and be done. Like, at least finish what you're trying to say. Fuckers. Sorry. That, yeah, I just, I guess that's why I get all fucking weird. Like, don't shit on it because then, like, when the internet shits on something, I get all fucking, uh, I don't want to start over. Like, let's, Finish the fucking story. Yeah, let's finish you know? the fucking story. And with that, it's a great line to end this podcast. Hi. Wow, love that. Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were. I didn't know if you were doing something else. One time. <laughs> The one time Carmen, Carmen's like the one time I have a good fucking ending, and these assholes fuck it up. I said bye. I waved. One person, thank you. <laughs> Which is good. On Spotify, bye. Wave. bye. Toodles. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. Adios. Bye. 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 bye.